Did you see my weather forecast last night? The one where you predicted the earthquake in Galveston? Yes. <laughs> I didn't predict it. I said it would be funny. <laughs> so, now that I'm a famous weather girl on cable, would you like an autographed photo? No, and I don't want the action figure either. <laughs> There's my little mommy to be. How you doing, honey? Oh, no, I have a really uneasy feeling about this pregnancy. Oh, honey, that's just normal. Why don't we talk about it? <laughs> what are you doing? You're about to mother, Reba. I love to watch you mother. I wish your mothering moments were available on DVD. I'd have every season. <laughs> honey? Well, I mean, I feel pretty good, and the doctor said that everything's going great, but I just, I have this feeling that something's just hanging over my shoulder, and it's making me feel really uneasy. I mean, do you ever have that feeling? <laughs> Honey, I think the feeling that you're talking about is what I call going good blues. Going good blues? Yeah, going good blues is a feeling that we all get when things are going really good, but we're just waiting for things to go bad. Oh, my God. Oh, heavens. <laughs> Cheyenne, just listen to me, okay? The key is not to worry about what could go wrong, but just enjoy all the things that are going right. Does that help? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Good. Thanks, Mom. Good deal. Okay, the woman is good. The woman is right. <laughs> the woman is wrong. What? I thought you said mom was great at mothering. Yeah, she is, okay? But she's old school, okay? I mean, that kind of advice would be great on the prairie, Mrs. Ingalls. <laughs> but today, we've got a whole new thing going. Well, why do you think I'm having this feeling? Oh, Cheyenne, you're having these feelings because you have got a million things to do before that baby comes. <sighs> I mean, there's so much to plan. I don't even know what to do first. Well, the first thing is done. You told me. <laughs> I'm gonna take it from here, Peanut, okay? Aww. Thanks, Barbara Jean, that's sweet. Now that I'm a role model, people stop me on the street all the time and they ask me, they say, stormy clear weather? <laughs> What is your secret for balancing your role as wife, mother, and career woman? And I say, it's no secret. It's organization. And then I say, would you like a photo? <laughs> Barbara Jean has compiled a list of all the things that you guys need to accomplish before my blessed event. Now, please skim through them and let me know if you have any questions. I think you're going to find that every item is necessary. Um, why is it that I have so many more pages than everyone else? Because you did this to me. I have to learn Spanish? Yes, honey. In case they have to take a cab and the driver is Latino. Probably the same reason I have to learn Farsi. Okay, now any and all other questions should be directed towards Van, who is in charge of all communications. Which includes printed materials, newsletters, and coming up with the baby name that is cooler than Siri but not as weird as Apple. I, meanwhile, will be in charge of fitness and nutrition. So, Cheyenne, I'm gonna need a list of foods already in the house, including fridge, pantry, and freezer. Okay, well, I believe that falls under communications. 
Cheyenne, you do realize I have a job, right? Say that to my stomach, Van, so our unborn child can hear how much you just don't care. Hey, when you come out, I'll show you where I hide from Mommy. Well, this has been really great, but I'm late for any place where they're not talking about Cheyenne. Well, uh, I'm gonna go rehearse with my band. Kira! Kira, I think this is a little more important than your little band rehearsal. This is about the birth of my child. Listen to yourself. It's always my, my child, my pregnancy, my fifth grade reading level. I read good, Kira. You should feel well about yourself. What did you do to make her so awful, Dad? Oh, don't blame me, baby. I was golfing for most of her childhood. <laughs> Almost 2 o'clock. As fitness and nutrition counselor, I think it's time for a light snack. Mm. Can we have some booze with our snack? <laughs> I think she was talking about Cheyenne. So was I. <laughs> so was I. I want to thank you guys for being so wonderful. I'm going to get each of you a nice little gift. And I believe that falls under communications. I like to fall under a truck. Hey, what's going on? Nothing, nothing. Meeting's over. Nobody say nothing. Mrs. H, she's given me pages of things to do. Who has? Her, Foggy Clearbottom. <laughs> What have you done? Nothing, nothing. I was just, I was so inspired by watching you mother earlier that I thought I might just step in and, and do a little touch up. You know who shouldn't do touch ups? The touched. Okay, I'm gonna go talk to Cheyenne and see if I can straighten out your mess. You know what? You were gonna get a photo, but not anymore. Well, I guess I better go get a book to teach me Spanish. Hey, wouldn't that fall under... communications? <laughs> go before I throw you. <laughs> Mr. H, would you do me a favor? Will you hold this pillow over my face until I stop twitching? Relax, pal. You're just a little stressed out. Look. The next time Cheyenne does something that's a little bit crazy, just let it bounce off of you like, like BBs off a of Buick. <laughs> BBs off a of Buick? Yeah. What kind of stupid advice is that? <laughs> hey, it works. Ping, 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 ping. <laughs> well, I guess it doesn't hurt to try. Is that what you did when Barbara Jean was pregnant? No, I played golf through most of her pregnancy. So, honey, stop worrying so much. You can count on us to make sure that everything will get done. And it's more important right now for you to relax and not let yourself get all worked up. Okay, I guess I could bring it down a couple of notches. I think I was overreacting because I'm just so excited to be pregnant again. <laughs> We're all excited, too. Oh, not Kira. Well, to be fair, this is a joyful event, and that's really not Kira's thing. <laughs> you know what I just thought of? Zip it, rainy sore bottom. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. I was just thinking that wouldn't it be hysterical if Cheyenne had a baby exactly like Kira? <gasps> what? Why would you say something like that, Barbara Jean? Because that's what she does. She just talks and talks and talks until somebody's head explodes. <laughs> well, it just seems like Elizabeth takes after her, so what if the next one takes after Kira? <sighs> okay, you know what? I changed my mind. I want the action figure and a hammer. <laughs> I could. I, I could have a baby just like Kira. I mean, Mom, do you remember what she was like growing up? She was a horrible little... B word. She was a B to me every single day. She was a, a B to my friends. 
honey. She was a B to everyone, and I could have another one right in here. Okay, stop it. Stop it. I want you to understand, I'm not saying this to hurt you. I'm saying this so you'll relax. Okay. And don't take it personally. Mm -hmm. Cheyenne? Yeah. Kira mm. was not the monster. You were. <laughs> you were the bee. <laughs> You're telling me this to cheer me up. That I was the horrible one, not Kira? Yes. <laughs> I see. Tag me in, Reba, tag me in. Tagging you, Barbara Jean. Cheyenne, listen to me. Kira followed you everywhere, but you didn't want to share the attention with her. I was an attention hog? Oh, come on, Mom, that doesn't even sound like me. <laughs> Sweetheart, you had a full-length mirror on your back. You know what? When I was younger, I was an attention hog. When you were younger? Oh, yeah. I completely outgrew it. I mean, now I'm uncomfortable being the center of attention. Stop looking at me. If I was what you're saying that I was, why don't I remember any of it? Okay, let me show you something, Cheyenne. <laughs> it's a picture from Kira's fifth birthday. I usually keep this picture tucked behind another photo. This is the only picture we took that day. The party took a bad turn. <laughs> what is this? It's a birthday cake with a toy fire engine smashed in it. My family used to use candles. <laughs> Quit looking at me. What happened? Well, we gave you the truck to give to Kira, but you didn't want to give her anything. So after she opened it, you took it from her and smashed it into the cake. That was the last day Kira cried. <laughs> I know what I have to do. I have to make things right with Kira so I can get my karma back in balance. Karma? Yeah, that's Buddhist for I'm rubber, you're glue. Hey, Van. Then are you sleeping with your eyes open again? You know, Mrs. H, when you shoot BBs at a Buick, some are gonna bounce off. Ping. Ping, ping. <laughs> but eventually, one is gonna sneak through and hit some glass. And it's gonna break into a million tiny pieces. Nobody knows what I'm going through! <laughs> Pull it together, boy. We got neighbors. <gasps> What's that? <laughs> That's Cheyenne texting me again. <sighs> she sent me out for ice. How long ago? <laughs> Come on. Where have you been? I text you like 50 times. <laughs> what is this? <gasps> The goldfish escaped. <laughs> What's going on here? We are decorating the house for a birthday party. Uh, for who? Kira. I'm giving her back the birthday party that I ruined for her when she was five. I asked Van to get me a big number five candle. He brought me a four and a one. It adds up to five. It's not the same thing. Oh. Ping, 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 ping. 
What made you decide to give her another birthday party? Me? Well, it was Cheyenne's idea, but I was right behind her. And look, y'all, I made a cake. But since I'm in charge of fitness and nutrition, I made a sugar-free bran cake with cottage cheese frosting. Oh, you know it'd go good with that? A hot cup of dirt. <laughs> Couldn't find any wrapping paper. Aw, oh, Jakey, I asked you to do one little thing and you can't seem to do it. <laughs> well, at least I didn't bring you four in a one candle. It adds up to four! <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Kira, do you know what this is? You finally got your GD? <laughs> Mom, what's going on here? Well, honey, your sister wanted to give you a birthday party to make up for one that she kind of um, messed up when you were younger. I did something that I regret, and I cannot feel better until I apologize. So this is about you feeling better? Yes. And you, too? <laughs> You're amazing, Cheyenne. Even when you do something for somebody else, it's still mostly about you. So you're not going to forgive me for one little thing that I did to you when we were kids that you don't even remember? No, Cheyenne, because it wasn't just one little thing. You were crappy to me all the time. And I do remember that birthday party very well. I believe it ended something like this. Mm -hmm. ah! oh! <laughs> Kara! Oh. <laughs> well, I better go talk to her. I'm done. I tried, and now I'm done. Now, honey. You know, what made me think that Kira would be anything but completely selfish about this? Now, hold on a second. That's not exactly fair. You can't expect someone to forgive you after years and years of hurtful behavior. Why not? <laughs> I have always been the giving one. It's about time that she did something for me. Oh, your little sister did a lot of things for you. Oh, name one. How about the time she beat up Tyler Wallace? Oh, yeah. Who? Tyler Wallace was this bully that one day made the mistake of pulling Cheyenne's pigtails. Oh, I used to keep mine greased just in case, you know. <laughs> Remember? Cheyenne screamed, Tyler laughed, and Kira came out of nowhere and dropped him hard. <laughs> she slapped that boy so many times it sounded like applause. <laughs> Look, Cheyenne, maybe Kira will forgive you, but you have to mean it. Oh, good, Kira. Your sister has something she'd like to say to you. Dad said I had to come in here. He didn't say I had to stop. Halt! Turn! Listen, speak nicely. OK, I'm sorry that, that, you know what? I could have a boy. Cheyenne! I don't know what to say. Just speak from your heart. Remember, the woman is good. at me. <laughs> okay, Kira. One thing that I hate doing most in this world is admitting that I was wrong, and especially admitting that I've been wrong for 15 years, but I have. I I've been very selfish. I treated you badly, and I blamed you for it, and I'm really, really sorry. And I hope that my daughter turns out exactly like you. Sort of. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate it. You're welcome. We're not going to hug, are we? No. Yes! 
<laughs> oh, Reba, that is so beautiful. Mm. You know, you and I may have very different styles of mothering, but you know, the bottom line is, we are good mothers. We are good. Where's Henry? <laughs> Crap! Yo, check it out. Beauty and the Geek, the two-hour season premiere, Wednesday. Hey, Reba. Hey, Brock. How are you? Oh, that's right. We're divorced. I don't care. Let me ask you something. What was the most romantic thing I did in our marriage? Leave. <laughs> that's funny because it's true. <laughs> yeah, come on. Look, I need to up the romance with Barbara Jean, and I'm coming up blank. Do what you did with me. Leave. She'll love you for it later. I'm serious, Reba. Things have been uh, a little rough between us. What with her losing all the weight and getting hired as a weather girl and me being... Well, me. Well, goodness gracious, Brock, why didn't you come to me sooner? Oh, that's right, we're divorced. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> hey, Daddy. Hey, honey. Mom, can I talk to you for a second? Honey, I'm kind of eating right now. Yo, I'm kind of pregnant, and this is an emotional emergency. <laughs> okay, what is it? Mom, I overheard everything. Poor Dad. You have got to help him turn up the heat with Barbara Jean. No, I don't. Yes, you do. That man in there, he is a part of our family, okay? And he needs our help. And I don't think it is too much for us to all just get along and, and love one another and not break up so this world could be a happy place for me to raise my children in. Do you think that's okay for you? Can you do that for me? Can you do that for my baby? <laughs> Wow, you really are pregnant, aren't you? <laughs> oh, okay. I'll do it. I'll help. Brock, wait. I'll... More <laughs> lips and gentlemen. You'll what? Help! Seriously? Yeah. Give me a little bit of time, and I'll come up with something that'll knock the socks off that giant wife of yours. Oh, wow. Thanks, Cheyenne. Where do you want this box that says, Kira, do not touch? You're not supposed to be in the garage. That's my office. Didn't you see the computer and desk I put out there? Jake put a poster of Bambi in his closet. Doesn't make it Disneyland. <laughs> Mrs. H, Kira seems to think that she can just waltz into our garage slash office and move around our stuff slash junk. Punish her. Man, I told her she could. Her band's shooting a video, and Kelly Clarkson has the kitchen booked. But that's my office. Share the space. But I need privacy. I go into my office to get into the zone. Once I'm in the zone, the magic happens. No office, no zone. No zone, no magic. No magic, no money. No shoes, no shirt, no service. That's a law, Kira. That's not funny. Kira is living here now. Just work something else out. Well, fine. Maybe I'll go to Kira's room and move her stuff around. I put a do not disturb sign on the door. Dang it! <laughs> Kira, honey, can't you just shoot your video over in your dad's garage? You can't run the lights in the tanning booth at the same time. Hey, Reba. So... Did you think of something to help me romance Barbara Jean? Yes, I did. You know, I thought about getting into Barbara Jean's head, but you know me, I hate cobwebs. <laughs> so this is what I came up with. First, get a babysitter for Henry so you guys can have more time alone. Then, 
hide some flowers around the house so that every time she turns a corner, she gets a beautiful surprise. Next, draw her a bubble bath. Light some candles, throw some chocolates on the pillows. You see where I'm going here? That's it? Candy and flowers? I could have gotten that from watching The View. What do you want from me, Brock? I don't know. Something original. Something that will wow her. Well, that shouldn't be too difficult. Just give her something shiny. Dangle her keys in front of her. Uh, <laughs> come on, Reba. I'm under a lot of pressure here. Especially since... Especially since what? Well... In two days, I'm going to Vegas for a dental convention. Are you kidding me? You're asking me to help butter up your wife so you can run off for a week of poker and strip clubs? It's a business trip. I play poker to network, and most strippers don't have dental insurance. on your own. I can't drag you two steps forward when you're slamming the brakes in reverse. No, no, no. Come on, Reba. I'm serious about this. Look, Barbara Jean and I have never been this distant before. Then cancel your trip. I can't. I've got tickets for Siegfried. <laughs> Fine. But this is my last shot. Take it or leave it. Pick a happy moment from your marriage. Could be an anniversary or a special night out. And recreate it. That is not half bad. Yeah. And if that doesn't work, just make sure you have your keys. Hey, man. Yeah, what's up? your autograph for some kids at school? Oh, sure, buddy. They remember the old Vanster, huh? Fast as lightning, agile as a kitty cat. This isn't really about football. It's about your thing on YouTube. My thing on who what? Kira posted a video of you getting in the zone. Everyone at school's talking about it. Get the zone. <laughs> Hi. My name's Van Montgomery. Big money. Big money. Gotta get in the zone. I'm gonna sell you a house. You just got served! Get in the zone. Here we go. Nah, that's not it. Come on, Van. One by half. One by half. Yes, these are my natural eyebrows. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. You're gonna make some money off that onion right there, buddy. The house is here, baby. Here we go. You wanna smack it? Go ahead. You wanna smack it? Go ahead. Who's that? Kira? 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 Get out of here! I feel so violated. Hey, you know, this reminds me of a joke. You know how many redheads it takes to change a light bulb? You know, you're getting the ball spot. <laughs> how was your mission in Vegas? Oh, uh, it was great. You know, in fact, I stopped by to thank you for pointing me in the right direction. I came up with something terrific for Barbara Jean. No, oh, can't wait to hear all about it. Well, you have to promise you won't tell anyone. I want this to be a big surprise. Oh, Scout's honor. What did your big orange head come up with now? <laughs> I got my vasectomy reversed. You what? Yeah. It's my present for Barbara Jean. I'm going to get her pregnant, this time on purpose. Wow, this Siegfried is a magician, isn't he? your vasectomy reversed? Yes. On the way to the airport, I was racking my brain. What would be the perfect moment from our marriage to recreate? And then it hit me. Barbara Jean was happiest when she was pregnant with Henry. So I called a specialist in Vegas. Snip, clip, they put me back together. I am locked and loaded. 
Bro, I meant a dinner and movie, not popping out another kid. No, 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 it's perfect. No. Imagine how surprised she'll be when she finds out she's pregnant. Surprised? You mean you're not gonna tell her? No, it's much more romantic this way. I mean, if I say, hey, I got my vasectomy reversed, well, that's all about me, but surprise, you're pregnant, that's all about her. Brock, you just don't spring a baby on someone. It's not like a scarf or a diamond ring. You can't take them back. No, 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 you have to discuss this with Barbara Jean first. No, no, yes, no, yes, yes, I yes, don't. Yes. No, you remember how angry she was when she found out I got a vasectomy? Well, that's because she wanted more kids. And now, she's gonna get her wish. <laughs> Is there anything you can't get done in Vegas? <laughs> hey there, Riverdance. You know, Kira, that is not funny. Not funny. I am a businessman, and in order to remain successful, I have to project an image of professionalism. And this, yeah. <laughs> no matter how sexy, it doesn't look professional. Dude, lighten up. Since when did you lose your sense of humor? No, I didn't lose my sense of humor, Kira. I grew up. And someday, you'll realize that if you don't take yourself seriously, nobody else will. Well, if it makes you feel any better, your video is beating the one of the cat flushing the toilet. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Do I look like a doofus to you? Don't answer that. I'm not a doofus. I'm not a doofus. I'm not a doofus. I am a professional. So next time, keep me out of your stupid, childish videos. You got it? Okay. Okay, I got it. Okay. At least I hope I got it. I need to talk to you. Honey, are you okay? Oh, yeah, it's just this stupid commercial about this old man who can't go to his grandson's baseball game because he's got a bladder condition. You know what? I think I'm gonna talk to someone a little less pregnant, okay? Oh, no, 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 no. Come on, Mom. I'm fine, I'm fine. Just tell me what's on your mind. Okay. Well, um, honey, I need some advice. Mm -hmm. I know someone who is about to make a big mistake. I mean, a huge mistake that will have a, a big impact on himself and everybody around him, and I just don't know what to do. Can you give me any names? No. Is one of the names a van? No. Okay. <laughs> well, whenever I'm in a situation like that, I usually ask myself, what would mom do? So, my advice to you is ask yourself, what would Reba do? Okay, I'm not talking to you anymore. Oh, wait, no. Look, the Reba that I know usually knows deep in her heart what the right thing to do is. And she does it no matter how painful or inconvenient it might be. Crap. <laughs> No one be naked. Oh, no one be naked. Hey, Barbara Jean, is Brock around? Oh, he's around. And he's about to make me feel like a natural woman. Yeah. Good. Uh, uh, hey, is there something I can help you with? I just came by to chat. I, yeah, I, well, you know, Reba, I know that you want to be over here 24-7, but I'm married now, and my husband and I need a little alone time. Am I interrupting something? I hope so. <laughs> Barbara Jean, this is important. Well, I'm sure that it can wait. I'm serious. So am I, Red. <laughs> so am I. Barbara Jean, honey, who is it? Oh, nobody, honey. It's just one of those sweet Mormons on a bicycle. <laughs> Are you going to let me in or not? Oh, okay, I'll just go around the back door then.
Wow. Very low, Reba, very low. Mm. Ah, the first time in a long time Brock shows a little hint of romance and you decide to drop by. Fantastic. <laughs> Brock, honey, I'm gonna go upstairs and I'm gonna put on something a little more revealing. <laughs> oh, and uh, Reba, when I come back downstairs, I'm gonna be half naked and you don't wanna see all this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing here? Look, we gotta talk. You cannot do this to Barbara Jean. Well, I took a little blue pill, and I'm pretty sure I can. <laughs> you cannot get her pregnant without talking to her first. It's deceitful, it's dishonest, and it's just plain wrong. It's also none of your business. Oh, yes, it is my business. Came my business when you told me about it. Reba, you have no idea how bad things are between us. If I don't do something to save our marriage, we may not make it. You mean things are really that bad? Yeah, things are really that bad. Well, go to couples therapy, get help, but not this. This is insanity. Look, we tried all that. It didn't work. Now, I know what I'm doing. This is the right choice for us. It's not your choice to make. Look, Barbara Jean may be your wife, but she's also my person I know. <laughs> so if you don't tell her, I will. Tell me what? <laughs> Oh, nothing, nothing, honey. You know what, Reba? We'll uh, talk about this later. Last chance. You tell her or I will. Tell me what? Okay, fine. There goes the surprise. Barbara Jean, honey, I wanted to do something really, really special for you, so I got my vasectomy reversed. What? Yeah, the salmon are swimming upstream. Uh, you got your vasectomy reversed? Surprise. Uh, and, and when were you going to tell me this little surprise? And when I ended up pregnant? Uh, wow. OK, all right. If it uh, helps, his heart was in the right place. OK, you know what? Don't defend him. On yeah. this. Wait a minute, honey, honey, why are you so mad? I, I thought that this would bring us closer together. How does lying and deceiving bring us closer together? Gosh, Brock, just when I think you're growing up, just when I think there is a glimmer of hope for us, you pull something like this? This was the last straw. You and your salmon can sleep on the couch. <laughs> Thank you, Reba. Sorry, Brock, is there anything else I can do? No, I think you've done enough for one evening. If it helps, you ruin salmon for me. Wait, do I look like a doofus to you, Kira? I am not. A doofus. I am not a do do doofus. I dance around like a doofus. Do I look like a doofus to you, Kira? 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 <laughs> oh, the girl's got talent. You gotta hand that to her. I've gotta go. I just got this computer back. All right. <laughs> hey, man, how was your day? Fantastic. <laughs> Man, you have a note taped to your back. I know, I put it there. <laughs> Why? You're not gonna believe this. I'm the fun guy. Thanks to Kira's videos, everybody thinks I'm a big goofball and it's working for me. Just today, some guy at the bus stop shouted, hey, doofus! <laughs> That's great. Because all the kids love me, they ask their parents to hire me. Tomorrow I have three meetings, an open house, and somebody wants me to MC a bar mitzvah. <laughs> What's a bar mitzvah? Well, it's like a sweet 16 party, except it's for a Jewish boy who just turned 13. Mrs. H, you can say you just don't know. 
Anyway, don't tell Kira about this or she'll stop taping me, okay? Hey, Mom. Hi, honey. Hey, you, boob. Mm hmm Hello, Kira. Now, if you excuse me, I'm gonna go to my office for some business-related rituals, and I'd appreciate absolute privacy. <laughs> with him. No, oh, you've made him famous. He's the doofus. <laughs> I don't think that one was on purpose. Catch Girlfriends, Monday, 9, 8 central. Why are you interviewing Barbara Jean for your school project? Because she's the most successful person I know. <laughs> but I'm the single mom who cooks and clean and still has time to love you. Yeah, but she's on TV. Hey, snacks. <laughs> My picture's on a bus bench. <laughs> Visitors on the set. OK, everybody, take five. OK, all right. <laughs> Jakey wants to interview me, huh? You know, normally I have my press agent go over all the details, but his bike was stolen today, so he's not here. <laughs> so, uh, why don't you just give me the lowdown? Barbara Jean! Oh, that's Kelly. You got me training this rookie weather girl from Oklahoma. Huh? You know, she's probably not even a certified meteorologist. Neither are you. <laughs> But of course, you are certified. <laughs> oh, are you busy? <laughs> well, that might have been a question to ask yourself before you screamed across the set. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind her, I'm Reba. V Reba? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I feel like I know so much about you just because how much Barbara Jean talks about you. Well, Barbara Jean can talk. Oh, so can I. Sometimes people say I talk way too much, but it's weird. I never know what I'm doing it. This just in. You're doing it now. Oh. <laughs> I hear you're from Oklahoma. I'm an Okie, too, up around McAllister. Oh, no way. Holdenville. No, Holdenville was just a mile away from us until the big tornado. Now it's two miles away from us. Right. <laughs> Oh, gee, girls, I hate to break up the Dust Bowl reunion, but uh, Kelly here's got some work to do. So are your folks cattle ranchers? Preachers. My brother, my daddy, and my granddaddy. You want to hear something funny? When I was a kid, my church choir, we went up and sang at the Holdenville Baptist Church. Oh, my gosh, that's so weird. No way. That's not your family's church. No, but that was close. <laughs> Oh my. Hey, uh, how about before you two realize that you're actually mother and daughter? <laughs> we get back to work, all right? Uh, We're back up, people. Everybody, let's look alive. Hey, Gary, huh? Okay, you can't fall. <laughs> wow, that was so wild. We should get together sometime. Okay, yeah, sure. Right yeah. on. I'll get your number from Barbara Jean. Okay, all right. Yay. No. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. I tell you what. If she does get on TV, America's really gonna love her. <laughs> well, if it's up to me, she is never gonna get on TV. She's evil. Evil? What are you talking about? Oh, I hate her. She's trying to steal my job, Reba. Don't let that aw shucks act fool you. She is a cold, dead-eyed shark. <laughs> and she's just looking to take a bite out of stormy clear weather. You're not Stormy Clearweather. Oh, yeah? 116 viewers say I am. you think, other than you being a screwball, that Kelly is trying to take your job? 
I think that the muckety mucks brought her here to replace me because I'm getting bigger than the station. Barbara Jean, no offense, I'm not even on the show and I'm bigger than the station. And I think Kelly is very nice. Oh, you think everybody's nice. That's why showbiz would crush you. Actually, you know what? You know what? Her liking you could work for me. All right, new plan, Reba. I want you to spend some time with her, okay? Because if she is planning to steal my job, she'll confide in you. Why would she do that? Well, you just bring that out in people, you know? They want to open up around you. When I was having my affair with Brock, I was dying to tell you about it. What makes you think, if she did confide in me, that I would break that confidence and tell you? Because you and I, we go way back, Reba. You just met her. You and I, we have a history. Yes, I do recall, but it's not a good history. <laughs> Reba, come on. I think we're all over that by now. Barbara Jean. Reba, please. This is my life we're talking about, and if I can't count on you, I got nobody. Plus, if I'm wrong, you get to tell me how stupid I was being. Okay, I would like that. <laughs> okay, fine. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But I'm not going to spy on her, okay? I'm just going to have a nice conversation okay. with her. Mm -hmm. Jake, let's go! People, I'd like a sparkling water. Thanks. It's all right. <laughs> Huh? These sonograms have gotten amazing, so they can tell the sex at nine weeks now, huh? Yeah, well, I didn't need a doctor to tell me that this was a boy. I think it's pretty obvious. <laughs> the acorn doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> Bam. Van, once again, that is the spine. <laughs> you know, if babies stayed that size, they'd be a lot easier to babysit. And give birth to. <laughs> Yeah, really. You're probably looking at a 12-pounder here. Well, it's pretty cool, you guys, but all this talk of birth has put me in the mood to write some death metal. This kid is gonna be such a stud. He'll probably play in the NBA one day. Hey, Mr. H, if you're still alive, I'll take you to a game. No matter what he does or doesn't do, we will love him just the same. Oh, please don't give the gay speech right now. <laughs> you know, the best part of all this is now you get to keep your promise to me. What promise? Well, the whole time Cheyenne was growing up, she promised me that if she ever had a boy, she'd name him Brock. <laughs> <laughs> what? You know, when you guys had Elizabeth, I was afraid that you'd stop at the one, but... Well, there he is. Hello, little Brocky. <laughs> Suddenly the gay speech doesn't sound so bad. Thank you so much for inviting me over to your house. And it is so cool that you live right down the street from Brock and Barbara Jean. Brock. <laughs> Brock. It's ridiculous. It sounds like a guy who had too many beers. Brock! Brock! I know a boy named Brock. His name is actually Chester, but he works on the grain elevator, so they call him Brock. I don't get it. Why? Because there was already a Chester working there. <laughs> Here, you can take these outside. Hope you like egg salad. Oh. My mama used to mix egg salad with potato salad. She called it egg tater salad. And then sometimes she'd put potato chips in her tuna and she'd make patuna salad. It was so good. <laughs> she cracks me up. I guess. You know, I don't think I've met anybody so nutty and innocent. Really? Yeah. You mean you, you don't find her crazy stories kind of annoying? Of course not. Quirky people like Kelly are a rare blessing. Oh, oh my gosh. You guys would not believe the day I just had. Okay, so I'm driving to my Beanie Baby's mother's group. <laughs> and the hubcap on my car just comes right off. Well, it hops the curb and it rolls right into a mobile phone store. Not the Can You Hear Me Now one, but the Catherine Zeta-Jones one. <laughs> anyway, I go in after to get it and one thing leads to another and look at my new phone. 
Do I smell patuna salad? <laughs> Barbara Jean, what are you doing here? Oh, nothing. Certainly not checking in to see how our covert spy mission is going. I'm not spying. Oh, hey, Barbara Jean! Hey, Kelly! <laughs> okay, watch this. Okay. It's partly cloudy, mm -hmm. with winds gusting from the northwest. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I already changed the channel. <laughs> Jean, when you are in my house, you will be nice. Now get out. Fine. But here's a little weather report for you. Outside, it's partly evil. <laughs> with a 50% chance of betrayal. <laughs> this is Stormy Clearweather signing out. Hey, Mrs. H, why does Barbara Jean think Kelly's going to take her job? Wouldn't that be redundant? What are you talking about? I know, it's a big word. <laughs> it means the same as. I'll use it in a sentence. Wouldn't that be redundant? I know what it means. Why would you say that? Well, why would they replace Barbara Jean with another Barbara Jean? Kelly is nothing like Barbara Jean. Why would you say that? No, you're right. She's nothing like Barbara Jean. Well, she is also sweet and helpful, and she'd give you the shirt right off of her back. So would Barbara Jean. As a matter of fact, she did that one time. Do you remember the worst funeral ever? <laughs> Where's Elizabeth? Oh, she's out on the swings with Barbara Jean. I mean, Kelly. <laughs> Kelly is nothing like Barbara Jean. Oh, my gosh. I never thought of that before, but they're like twins, aren't they? Yes. No! Mom, Barbara Jean wants to know if she can come back in. Her name is Kelly. No, her name is Barbara Jean. <laughs> she says you yelled at her. Why'd you yell at Barbara Jean? She always yells at Barbara Jean. No, I don't. You just did. Yeah, well, she was saying something crazy about her hubcaps. Meanwhile, Kelly's out there being pigeon girl. <laughs> and she just cracks you up. Believe this. It's true. Mm. Oh man, they're like two peas in a pod. And two nuts in a shell. <laughs> so why is Kelly so delightful and Barbara Jean so annoying? Because Kelly didn't have an affair with your husband? Yet. <laughs> I mean, she just got to town. That's my dad. I know. I'm sorry. I'm just still steamed about his stupid name. Hey, what's his middle name? Enroll. <laughs> Brock enroll? You know what? The preacher asked me not too long ago if I'd forgiven Barbara Jean, and I said yes. But you know what? I don't think I have. You know what's weird, Mrs. H? I wonder if all that stuff with Mr. H had never happened, and you had met Barbara Jean some other way. I wonder if you two would have been best friends. Brava! Come look. I can do a cartwheel with my sandwich in my mouth. She me, Dad. I'll be right down. Oh, Leanne, I don't want to do this. Do you really want to name our son Brock? No. It's as weird as Van. What? Honey, Van is a weird name. Well, it's certainly no Cheyenne. <laughs> hey, I got an idea. Why don't we name our kid Navajo? Do not make fun of my name. You started, Sacagawea. What? Go on. Tell him, Pocahontas. <laughs> hey, kids. What's going on? Hey. Um, Dad, so m Mom had this, um, this book where they have all these baby names in it and, um, you know, the meaning of them and stuff. And so, you know, we, we just thought that for, you know, the heck of it, that we, we, we would look up the name Brock. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it means uh, mountain or something, right? No. 
You know what name means mountain? Mountain. <laughs> so, uh, so what does Brock mean? Um, well, it's, um, it's an old English name yeah. from like the 1700s and, well, it, it just, it Badger! <laughs> oh, what? Badger. That's what your name means, Mr. H, that freaky looking animal with long claws. You're a badger, Mr. H. No, I don't think that's right. Oh, that's right, right there, right in between Brocco and Brutus. Brutus. <laughs> okay, fine, so it means badger, so what? Oh, nothing. Well, we just, you know, what do, we were just, you know. Do, oh, what, are you saying that you don't want to name the kid after me? No, 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 Mr. H, it's not that we don't want to name him after you. We just don't want to give him your name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, look, you guys, that's, that's totally up to you. Oh, well, you're not going to be upset? No, honey, come on. It's just some silly thing you said when you were a kid. Are you sure? He sure, Cheyenne. One thing about a badger, they never change their minds. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. H. Yeah. It just, it seemed kind of important to you when you brought it up. No, no, honey, not at all. Not at all, really. In fact, to tell you the truth, I don't even like the name myself. <sighs> Why was it important to you? Forget about it. <sighs> honey, okay, look, it's just... Well, I was hoping that maybe this was a way that I could know for sure that you really forgave me for what happened. You know, between me and your mom. Dad, that was five years ago. How could you still worry about that? You know what you're going to learn as a parent, Cheyenne? You worry that every mistake you make, your kids will never forget. Well, I'll never forget. That's, that's just the way that it is. But do I forgive you? Yes. Dad, really? I swear to God I do, yes. Oh, honey. <laughs> I forgive you too, you crazy old badger. Come here. I love you guys. Yeah, I love you. My badger and my sack of you wheel. <laughs> So then, after my aunt on my mama's side got divorced, she married my uncle on my daddy's side, who was already divorced, which makes my cousins stepbrothers. Isn't that funny? You know, it should be. No. No, it's not. Is something the matter, Reba? Oh, no. No, no, Kelly, I'm sorry. It's just that I'm thinking about something else. Sorry. Dang it. I'm bugging you, aren't I? Why do I act so goofy? Hey, look at me. I'm an idiot. <laughs> You're not an idiot. You're cute. I hate cute. I don't want to be cute. I want to be hip and sultry. <laughs> yeah, I used to be hip and sultry, and then I threw my hip out. <laughs> well, it looks like I'm stuck with cute and goofy. It's a good thing I want to be a weather girl, just like your best friend, Barbara Jean. <laughs> oh, well, Kelly, there's a lot that's going on between Barbara Jean and me that you don't know about. Oh, no, I know all about it. And honestly, the fact that you've forgiven her is one of the reasons why you're so amazing. Did the station bring you in to replace Barbara Jean? What? Did the station send you here to replace her? Because if they did and you go along with it, you and me, we're going to have some serious problems there, Peaches. <laughs> no, of course I'm not. Okay, then why are you here? Because I want to learn from the best in the business. We are still talking about Barb Jean, right? <laughs> Replace her? No way, Reba. She's my idol. <laughs> Heck, I could never do anything to hurt Barbara Jean. She's just, well, I don't know. I can't explain it. Neither can the doctors. <laughs> Weather girl quiz. Wind. Whoosh. Rain. <laughs> Lightning. <laughs> oh, Kelly, no, that's snow. All right, this is Houston. When is it gonna snow in Houston? You have got to learn your hand gestures. I got a hand gesture for you, Barbara Jean. <laughs> Reba, she's trying to break into show business. Something you know nothing about. Okay, this is like a contest, and you need to bring it up 
to another level. Well, I think she's doing great. What do you guys think? All right, yo, 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 check it out. Check it out. Where's the ball? Yeah, you're the dog pound tonight, girl. Woo, 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 woo. Yeah. I just, I think she's adorable. You know, she's just warm and the gestures and, you know, you just, you're human, you know. You're just so human, you know. You know. All right, listen to me. That was atrocious. That was like watching a weather report on a cruise ship. You have ruined weather for me. Simply dreadful. No, no, boo! All I need is honest. That's please, all. Please, please. You know, just don't even listen to him. He's English, okay? Just please. It just, it worked so good. So good. Just, the lightning, just, you know, just woo! <laughs> oh. Wow. Tough panel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Simple game, Jake. You just kicked the ball into the net. I did. Yeah, right into the other team's net. Well, I got confused because you were yelling at me. I was yelling, wrong net, wrong net, wrong net. Guys, guys, pull it. You didn't even let us have our fruit roll-ups and juice. You're the worst coach ever. Yeah, well, you probably would have kicked the snacks into the other team's mouth. Fan. <laughs> Look, Mom just got back from the doctor's office, and her blood pressure is, like, super high. She cannot have any stress. So keep her voice down. That kid is an embarrassment. Fan, do you hear what I'm saying? Stop yelling! <laughs> Cheyenne, didn't I just tell you I need peace and quiet? Yeah, Cheyenne, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Sorry, Mom. I know that you need to relax. How about you have a nice hot bath? Okay, I'm gonna go up and take my bath. And while I'm in there, I'm gonna listen to the relaxation sounds that my doctor put on my little iPod Ooh. here. Oh, I listened to one of those once. Yeah, it was the sounds of a very calming rainstorm. I fell asleep and then I peed myself. <laughs> Life is good. Life is calm. And relax. One, two. Happy, happy, three, four. All is good. from that soccer game. Hey, how about we go upstairs and you give me a back rub? Van, you know that always leads to something. Yeah, I know. Why? You want to skip the back rub? <laughs> what is an orange manatee doing in my shower? <laughs> oh, yeah. I knew there was something I was supposed to tell you. Dad's in your shower. Well, then call SeaWorld. He's going back. <laughs> Mr. H has been staying in the garage for the past few days. The only way he's staying in the garage is if a car is running. <laughs> hey, Reba. Sorry about that. Bet that brought back some memories, though, huh? <laughs> Almost brought back my lunch. Aw, <laughs> oh, come on. The old fella's aged pretty well, don't you think? Yeah, that's what happens when you soak something in alcohol. <laughs> Come on, Cheyenne, let's go. You know I'm not giving you a back rub. Don't worry. The urge has passed. <laughs> so is it true you're living in my garage? Yeah, I've been sleeping on the pull-out couch. Barbara Jean and I are taking a little break. She thinks I'm on a business trip. Why don't you stay at a hotel? Well, if I stay at a hotel, that makes it real. This way, we can have a little break without it being such an official separation. Why don't you just admit that you're cheap? I am not cheap. 
I just don't happen to believe that a room service waiter automatically deserves 12%. <laughs> Look, Reba, I, really, things are bad with Barbara Jean and me, but I'm trying, really, I am. Come on, let me stay in the garage just a couple of more days, please. Brock, I am under strict orders to keep my blood pressure at a minimum, and you're not helping one bit! <laughs> Remember, I'm out of town. Hey. Hey, Barb Jean. Brock's out of town and Henry's staying with Nana, so I got bored and I baked you a cake. Happy Tuesday, Reba. Yeah. It's Wednesday. <laughs> Happy Reba. So, Brock's out of town, huh? Yeah. Reba, can I confide in you? Is it something embarrassing and personal about Brock? Yes. Then yes. <laughs> it's just... He's just such a big baby. Yeah. You know, every time we have a little problem, he goes on a business trip. I mean, the guy's a dentist. There are plenty of rotten teeth in Houston. <laughs> you know, I'd say he's been hanging out at hotels, you know, except he's so cheap. So, tell me more about his cheapness. <laughs> I mean, I could go on forever. The guy once tried to buy half a box of Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> yeah, he's cheap and vain too, huh? Yeah, he is. Yeah. One time, I caught him looking at himself in the mirror and he was saying, enough about you. Let's talk about me. Well, hang in there, Barbara Jean, from my experience. You just never know when Brock might pop up. You know what's weird, Weba? He's not even in town, and I can still smell him. It's like this weird mixture of cocoa butter and feet. Thanks. What are you doing? I'm trying to think of a way to fix my team. And being a brilliant coach, I did. I have come up with a plan that is going to change their entire attitude and turn us from losers, ooh, into winners. What's the plan? I'm cutting Jake from the team. What? No, Van, you cannot cut Jake from the team. I have to. His rotten attitude is infecting the entire team. He is the Terrell Owens of preteen soccer. He's also a member of your family. Not by blood. <laughs> Cheyenne, when we have our son, that kid will be athletic and have awesome eyebrows like his dad. <laughs> he will be well and proud. What do you think Mom's gonna say when Jake tells her that you cut him from the team? Cheyenne, I can't coach constantly worrying about the owner. Uh. <laughs> hey, buddy, I think we need to talk. Yeah, we do. Good. Ben. Cheyenne, this is official team business, so thank you. No. Thank you. Mm, thank you. <laughs> Jake, look, I'm just gonna come right out with it because we're both adults. Well. You're not an adult, but let's pretend you are and just get on with it, okay? Okay. Okay. You're fired. <laughs> What'd you say? I said you're fired. <laughs> uh, Jake, you, you, you can't fire me. It's not just me, it's the whole team. What are you, stupid kids crazy? <laughs> the parents won't stand for this. It was the parents' idea. Oh, so it's a coup, huh? Huh. Some psycho dad took my coaching job. Who is it? It's not a dad. Oh, man. Is it one of Jimmy's two moms? <laughs> huh? It's not a parent. Then who is it? Hey, man. Tough break. Fine. You can take my team. You can take my job. But you can never, ever, 
Take my dignity. What are you doing? Oh, I was just uh, getting a blanket out of the closet. Yeah, the garage only gets so warm, even with the dryer open and running. You know how to make it warmer? Turn on the car. <laughs> or you could go home to your house. You know what, Reba? This is way more complicated than you think. Okay, then I'll make it simple for you. Go home to your wife. I can't. She thinks I'm out of town. Won't you just tell her the truth? You know, Reba... <laughs> I'm one of those people who actually believes that the truth imprisons you. <laughs> Plus, no matter what I say to Barbara Jean, it causes a fight. Then just be with her. Don't speak. Not a bad rule of thumb for you, by the way. <laughs> you know, you do smell like cocoa butter and feet. What is it? She shot me! Oh. Oh. oh, my gosh, did you call the doctor? Did you call 911? Oh, no, no, she shot me with a paintball gun. Oh, and it hurts like hell. I'm gonna have a big boo-boo tomorrow. That was me. You? What are you doing here? I thought you were out of town. Uh, I switched my flight from Austin so I could come back and check on you. I didn't even care about the extra cost. And believe me, it was substantial. Austin? You said you were in Dallas. I got a connecting flight from Austin. A connecting flight from Dallas? That's a 45-minute flight from here to there. Why would you connect? Why connect? <laughs> Why could I... Why not connect? Uh, okay, what is going on here? What is going on here? What is going on? What is going on here? Okay, Reba, do you think you can help me out? Can I help you out? Oh, God bless America! Somebody start talking! Okay. Brock? I think it's time you use the T word. Yes, yes, tea. Everybody loves a nice hot cup of tea. Okay, who takes honey? Brock, tell her the truth. Fine. I wasn't in Austin. I've been staying in Reba's garage. Ah, uh, well, isn't that cozy? Well, Every time something goes bad, you go run into your ex-wife. And you! I mean, is that why you wouldn't let me stay in your garage? You had your little gigolo stash there? <laughs> oh, yeah, Barbara Jean. Every night I dream about waking up in the arms of my manatee again. <laughs> well, don't I feel like an idiot? Barbara Jean. No, Brock. And next time, I got 200 rounds. And I'm aiming low. <laughs> That one will. Yeah, looks like you're stuck with me for another couple of days. No, no more. No. You have to go talk to her from your heart. Tell her what you're feeling. I'm a guy. I don't know what I'm feeling. Then talk to her. Tell her that. And then you can start mending all the things that are wrong. Brock, if we'd have done that, maybe we would have had a chance. Uh, I don't know, Reba. I think maybe I should stay here one more night. <laughs> Brock, honey, the gun I own doesn't shoot paint. <laughs> Come on, make my day. Kira as the coach? Kira? I mean, what's her philosophy of sports? Hey, kids, soccer's important, but life itself is meaningless. <laughs> 
was the greatest game ever. Oh my gosh, you guys won? Nope, we got murdered. 11 to nothing. I think it was 13, coach. 13 to nothing in soccer? How many did you score for them? Two. That's how I got snacks from both teams. <laughs> Kira, you can't let them lose like that. Those psycho parents will tear you to pieces. Thanks for the advice. Oh, uh, tell Mom I won't be home for dinner because some of those psycho parents want to take me out for sushi. <laughs> <laughs> you see that? She's turned them from losers into happy losers. Man, they're kids. Okay, and maybe your coaching style is a little too intense. Oh, that's ridiculous. You know what? When we have our son, that's when I need to coach. Well, maybe your coaching style is a little too intense for our son, too. Why do you keep saying I'm too intense? <laughs> I want to show you something, okay? I taped the game from last week. Here we go, here we go. Get it going! Get it going! No, 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 no. <laughs> Come on, baby. Kick it! Kick it! Kick it! <laughs> what are you doing? What do you think this is? Huh? A blind convention? What are you doing, pal? It's my father. Nope, nope. I, I had the camera. It was you. No, I know it's me, but that the way I was acting, that's my father. That's the way my dad coached me my whole life. Oh, man, that's so sad. That's not sad. That's why I'm so good at sports. <laughs> yeah, and it also is probably why, you know... Probably why what? Well, why you hate your dad. I don't hate my dad. I just, you know, I don't... I don't talk to him or... Call him or think about him. Oh my gosh, I hate my dad. And now I'm turning into him. Cheyenne, I don't want my Will and Brown son to hate me. Oh, Cheyenne, calm down. He's not going to hate you. He's going to love you. Okay, because no matter whether he's good or bad at anything, we are always going to be good at loving him. Okay? Okay. And you're not going to coach any of his games. I can't believe I didn't realize that I was turning into my dad. Oh. When did you realize that you were turning into your mom? Mom. <laughs> well, no, never, because I'm not turning into my mom. No, I know. You already did. Uh, <laughs> okay, you know what? I am not turning into my mom, you moron. Do you realize what you just said? Crap! <laughs> Oh, I did. I did a small one. Oh, hey, Reba Dabba Doo. <laughs> well, look at you two. No new bullet holes or fresh paint. Well, you know, it wasn't really comfortable being honest with each other, but it really did work. We just needed to talk things out. Yeah, and we did. We yeah. did. We stayed up all night and we put all of our problems on the table. We were completely truthful. And you were right, Reba. It did set us free. Well, I hate to say it, but when I'm right, I'm right. <laughs> and even when I'm kind of wrong, I'm still kind of right. <laughs> well, this time you were right, right. Good. We're getting a divorce. Thanks for making us talk. That's not what I meant when I said the talk. I meant work it out. Yeah, well, look, we're not thrilled about this either, but it seemed like it was the only thing we could do to stop the pain. Yeah, it didn't used to be like this. We used to have fun. We were just reminiscing about all that and, you know, all the good times we had, and... You know, I just... I really think it's for the best. You know, and I couldn't be happier. 
I can't wait for court. <laughs> <laughs> Brock, you can't let this happen. You know what? <clears throat> I'm gonna go check into a hotel. I, I really do think this is for the best. You're not such a great liar anymore, Brock. Yeah, I know. I miss those days. I'm never going to be able to relax. <laughs> oh, well. Here we go, here we go. Get it going! Get it going! No, 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 no. Come on, baby. What are you doing? <laughs> what do you think this is, huh? A blind convention? What are you doing, pal? Maybe you can give us the whistle a little bit. Do it right around. Ah! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> now I'm really relaxed. <laughs> What is your problem? That was a great house. Three bedrooms, two baths, and a large backyard. Van, it was a colonial. I want an English cottage. I was very specific. I want a Tudor house with an English garden, three gables, a pond with a water wheel, and a turret where I can stand and brush my beautiful long blonde hair. An English cottage in Houston? Why don't we just look for an igloo? Van, the house that we provide shelter and love for our children, the one that we raise them in, it will be perfect. And by perfect, I mean a Tudor house with an English garden, three gables, and a turret. Now maybe, just maybe, you're not looking hard enough. Oh, I, oh, what, Cheyenne, who am I, hmm? Who am I? Look at my business card. Oh. I am Van Montgomery. I am great at real estate. <laughs> I will find a house for you and your spouse. I would have written more, but I ran out of space. Now, if there's a house like that in Houston, I would have already have found it. Van, Cheyenne, I have found you the perfect house. Is it an English cottage? Oh, it's so English, it hates France. <laughs> there's no way, Mrs. H. I've looked at every house in the area in our price range. Well, it's a little higher than your price range, but it's been on the market for a long time, and I think we can talk the owner down on the price. I've got you an appointment at 2 o'clock to look at it. Now, Mrs. H, okay, this sales pitch might work on less sophisticated buyers, but I assure you, we are not that easily conned. <laughs> it has a turret. <laughs> Two o'clock, you say? Jolly good. Go check out a house for Van and Cheyenne. Wanna go with us? I can't. I'm going go karting with Jack and Kendall. And Kendall's gonna super glue Jack's butt to the go kart seat. <laughs> Kara, how about you? Uh uh. Who do you think is giving the super glue to Kendall? <laughs> Guess what we're doing? Fixing to get Brock beat up. No, we are going on a divorce date. Oh, wow, sounds romantic. Well, if you guys like dating, why are you getting a divorce? Oh, no, 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 it's a date about the divorce. We're gonna start talking through some of the details. I get that, all right. Why the uh, costumes? Reba, I'm a celebrity, so my man has to appear interesting in some way. <laughs> We've got to dress up for my viewing public. 
Wow, what's the chances you'll bump into all three of them? <laughs> Reba, I don't expect you to understand. But because I am an important figure, we need to be aware of our appearance in public at all times. Our? I thought you two weren't two anymore. Yes, but that's off the record. Yeah, Barbara Jean doesn't want her public to know that we're separated because... People want their weather from someone in a stable relationship. <laughs> we better get going, Brock. Yeah. Hey, Brock, wait a minute. I know why Lou Screw is doing this, but why are you doing this? Ah, what's the harm? I got a full-length mirror in my bathroom where you can see the harm. <laughs> okay, look. Barbara Jean always complained that I wasn't supportive of her career, so I want her to know that I am. Well, that's very noble of you. Uh, I don't mean to be mean, but isn't that kind of like closing the barn door after the cows run away? <laughs> Maybe. But maybe I want the cow to know that I miss it. Boy, that is a really terrible metaphor when you're talking about your wife. Mom? This is beautiful. As you can see, the house has beautiful hardwood floors. Laminate. Handcrafted. Veneer. Solid oak. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> the kitchen has brand new appliances and granite countertops. Upstairs has been converted to a game room. Game what? A game room complete with a pool table, air hockey table, and a flat screen TV that the owner says she'll throw in at the same price. Oh. I'm okay, but I can't say that for Mrs. Pac-Man. <laughs> Excuse me, I have to uh, speak with my wife for a moment, please. Cheyenne, yeah. I love this house. I know, me too, Van. Let's make an offer. Okay, but wait. She represents the seller, okay? So we have to play it cool. Okay. We'll take it. We'll pay anything she wants. <laughs> what are you doing? That's not the way you negotiate. Now watch and learn. Yeah, you know, we might be interested, but uh, we got a lot of other options. So we are in no rush to buy. Uh, this is, I don't know. Well, would you like for me to talk to the owner and see if she'll come down on the price? Eh, whatever you want. I could take it or leave it. It's not like, you know, like, no. Uh, oh, there's the owner now. I'm going to meet her and get this thing started. Okay. Take your time. Oh, man. I hope this works out. Could you imagine our own house? I know, and it's like it's destined to be ours. I mean, it looks like us. The landscaping looks like us. The picture on the wall even looks like us. <laughs> it is us. It's a picture of our senior class. Hey, that's a picture of Bridget. Bridget O'Hara? What's she doing on my mantle? <laughs> Guys, this is Bridget. Bridget, this is Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Bridget! <laughs> you two know each other? Well, of course. Cheyenne, Van, and I were all friends in high school. Well, what a small world. How come I've never met her? Well, because why would I bring her around? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Van, look at you. <laughs> you are even bigger and stronger than you were in high school. <laughs> Cheyenne, isn't it unfair? Guys just get better looking with age, and we girls, I mean, <laughs> look how I've fallen apart, really. <laughs> I don't see anything falling, but I do see parts. <laughs> oh, Vance, stop it! Oh, yeah, Vance, stop it! <laughs> so, you guys are old friends. That's so nice. <laughs> and usually old friends say nice things to each other, especially when you're trying to buy a house from them. Right, Cheyenne? Right. You know, Bridge, you do look better than you did in high school. You're not as pear-shaped. <laughs> <laughs> well, that must be because I am now a fitness instructor. Yeah. I specialize in derrieres. Oh. I'm a derrierist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
fitness instructor, huh? What mm -hmm. happened? Couldn't get into law school? Oh, you know me, Cheyenne. I was always the pretty one, and you were always the smart one. I was not the smart one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's all very interesting, but we should really start talking about the house now. Oh, Cheyenne, you know what I just thought of? That's so funny. Remember when I asked Van to the Sadie Hawkins dance right before you did? Oh. <laughs> You know, Bridget, I think that's water under the bridge. Yes, yes it is, yeah. Bridget. And you know why? Because I got the guy. Mm. Yeah, we've been married for five years, and I'm pregnant with our second child. You're pregnant? Mm -hmm. Oh, that explains it. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Okay, here. Uh, the important thing is we're here to buy a house. Take a seat. Thank you. And it, I think it's about time for us to discuss the price. So, Bridget... Uh, the house has been on the market for quite a long time now, so we were thinking you might want to come down on the price just a little bit. Okay, hang on a second. Cheyenne, do you really want this house? Yes, Bridget, I really do. Well, that's good, because you're not going to have it. What? Why are you doing this? Because you made my life miserable in high school. <sighs> the things you wrote about me in the bathrooms? Bridget's missing a digit? <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> I don't know, but it, it was pretty funny in high school. <laughs> You know what's funny now? You're not going to get this house. I just got off the phone with Bridget, and she's at least willing to come over here and talk. Now, if you want her to reconsider, I suggest that you be nice to her. Oh, please. Cheyenne, you've got to let this high school stuff go. We're talking about your home here, not who should have been homecoming queen. Me? I was wrong! <laughs> Cheyenne, that must be Bridget. Our doorbells never sounded so slutty. Hey, Mrs. H, no offense, but you kind of botched that back there, so let me handle Bridget, okay? You talk like a babbling idiot when she's around. Hey, that was an act. I am completely in control. No, oh, right. Hello. <laughs> you better handle this. Bridget, won't you come in? Thank you. Look, I think the first thing we need to do is apologize for our behavior over at the house. Right. You first, Mrs. H. I meant you. Right. So, uh, Bridget, uh... Being a professional real estate agent, I know that emotions can run high when you're buying or selling a house. So, I just want to apologize. I want to apologize. Well, I suppose we all got a little emotional. Going through this divorce has forced me to take a hard look at myself. And for the most part, I really do like what I see. <laughs> and I will be happy to reconsider once Cheyenne apologizes. What? Yeah. She's sorry. She's terribly sorry. You know what? Why don't you two hug and make up? <laughs> I haven't heard the apology. Cheyenne, the only other turret in town is at the miniature golf course. <sighs> Bridget, I said some pretty mean things to you in high school and yeah. in the yearbooks and the occasional bathroom. Um, and for that, I'm, I'm truly, truly sorry. I hope you can forgive me. I am truly, truly sorry that I asked Van to the dance. Although it is kind of a funny story. What? <laughs> oh, come on, Van. We could all use a little laugh. <laughs> Why? Well, what, what happened? Well, I asked Van because he asked me to. <laughs> he didn't want to go with you. He couldn't stand you. Isn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So. So how do we start this? I don't know. I guess I guess the first thing is, are are you sure that you're comfortable doing this without any lawyers? I guess. 
I mean, Reba had a lawyer, and you still screwed her in the divorce. <laughs> I did not. You know, frankly, frankly, the lawyers were a big part of the problem. I mean, you know, they, they make their money when they get both parties into some big fight. Well, I don't want that. No, me neither. So I guess we just have to be honest with each other. I agree. Okay, all right, well, I'll go first, okay? Okay. All right. <clears throat> Um, I am being completely honest mm -hmm. when I say that I feel ridiculous wearing this tie. So if it's okay with you, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take it off. Oh, okay? no, 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 no. Leave the tie on. You look great. Well, thank you, honey, but seriously, Barbara Jean, don't you think I'm a bit overdressed for a restaurant that serves burn your butt chili? I mean... <laughs> well, I think you're not overdressed to be seen in public as Stormy Clearweather's husband. Okay, look, um, being completely honest here, just two, two tiny, tiny little things. One, you're not Stormy Clearweather, and two, we are here because you don't want me to be your husband anymore. Okay, well, here are two tiny little honest things from me. One, I am stormy clear weather and two for once can we just do what i want and not what you want and just leave the tie on sorry stormy the tie is coming off okay i'm warning you if you take that tie off you are gonna be in big trouble. Really? Mister. Yeah, big trouble. Oh. Right. Do not test Here me. Here it goes. Do not undo what are you gonna do? that tie. Do what not are you gonna undo do? it. What Don't are you gonna undo do? it. What Don't are you gonna undo do? it. Do what are you gonna not do undo it? that tie. No, I'm so I'm scared. Telling... Oh, Barbara what? Jean, do not you dare on it. What? 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 Oh, God, I'm so turned up. Yeah. What do you mean you couldn't stand me? I didn't say that, she did. Well, is it true? Yes, you were so smart, I was intimidated. I was not smart! <laughs> okay, I believe we're losing sight of what today's meeting is all about. I mean, about. what did you do, Van? Did you just, you know, go up to her and say, I hate Cheyenne, ask me to the dance? Of course not. No, he wrote me a poem. A poem? A poem! <laughs> it was a note, luckily it rhymed. Oh, I well, I think I'd like to hear that poem. But nobody remembers that. Please take me to the dance. I promise to wear long pants. I'll do anything I can not to go with Cheyenne. <laughs> you jerk! Okay, that's it. You know what, Bridget? We don't want your house. What? what? That's right. No house is worth standing here listening to some derrieres torture my daughter. <laughs> oh, you are making a big mistake. You better leave quick or I'm going to get a stick. Well, fine. Mad. I mean, if you were going to kick her out, you could have at least done it before I apologized. <laughs> yes. Okay, maybe things just got a little out of control, okay? Oh, that sounds so close to an apology, but not quite there yet. Bye bye. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. I was just trying to get back at you, Cheyenne. Look, I really need to sell this house. Do you still want to buy it? Maybe. For 20 off a list price. What? In this market, that's all it's worth. Take it or leave it. Okay. Deal. Oh, you know what? Mm. Cheyenne, you should go hug Bridget. You know, we should all go hug. <laughs> I'll come over later this afternoon. We can hammer out the deal. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. This is H. Underneath that pile of red hair and emotional rage is a genius. How did you know she was going to come back? Well, then you just have to learn how to read people. Like you right now. I know you're hungry. <gasps> <laughs> I am hungry. You're, you're a genius. I'm so hungry. Very impressive, Mom. Thanks. 
You had no idea she was going to cave, did you? No. <laughs> I just lost my temper and it all fell into place. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you did. Oh. oh, honey, I just wish we could go back and get you that homecoming queen. I was wrong! <laughs> Was different. I know. That was amazing. That was even better than the parking lot. Yeah. Well, it's getting kind of late. Or should I say early? <laughs> well, we better get some shut eye. You're right. Good night, hon. Goodbye. What? Well, you didn't think you were going to stay the night, did you? Brock, we're getting divorced. What kind of girl do you think I am? So, what? You're saying I just had a one night stand with my wife? Well, not necessarily. I was thinking of having you over tomorrow night. So I don't have to stand cuddle. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> At least I can take off the stupid tie now. Do not undo the tie. Oh, I'm undoing the tie. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, I do. Do not. Look, don't. Look, it's coming off. It's coming off. It's coming off. You're not coming back on the tie. Oh, God. God. <laughs> 